Welcome to Five Tool Sports Talk. Back, we are at episode number forty-two. Uh, wow, Jackie Robinson. Ten more, <laughs> and uh, we got a full year under our belt. So I'm Sean. That's Bill. Uh, welcome back to a Major League Baseball All Star Edition, because the All Star Game is going on right now. And while we will not bring you live updates and scores, we will let you know that it is going on right now. And, and I think the American League was leading. I think uh, I believe so. Yeah, I think that's what we are legally allowed to say right now. Uh, we'll talk about the all-star <laughs> format the way it is now in Major League Baseball as opposed to, uh, to other sports. Um, Do a little retro stories when uh, both of our guests uh, were in the majors, a uh, little different eras. One right. during the seventies, one during the eighties and nineties. Right. So we're, we're very pleased to have uh, you. Probably remember the gentleman to my left here, Pat Darcy, for a uh, former member of the uh, Big Red Machine with the Cincinnati Reds back in the the mid to late seventies. Also a Rincon Ranger. Rincon Ranger. Are they still the Rangers? Yes. Oh, okay. They, they're still ruling too. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and then to his left, Ed Vosberg. Yes. Maybe you can give people a little background on Ed Vosberg and his history in Tucson. Ed Vosberg had a nasty curveball when he was 13. <laughs> <laughs> Is, that's all you're going to say. I'm like, hey, let's give a little background. He's, well, when he was 13, he no, could really pitch. A, I don't know about yeah, after that, but, yeah. you know. Ed's actually one of three players that has played in a Little League World Series, has a college national championship, and also a Major League World Series ring. Wow. So and so we're in good company. So uh, Rincon Ranger and South Point Lancer. South Point correct? Lancer, yeah. There you go. He could have gone to Rincon though. He lived in our neighborhood. <laughs> yes, he did. Oh, yeah. all right. Well, <laughs> so, that was pre that was pre magnet school. <laughs> I was gonna say that that'll be a story for another time. That's that's a whole different show as to uh, high school selection with baseball. <laughs> but and then um, now Ed, correct me if I'm wrong. Bill was telling me before the show that you were the first Lancer in the to be drafted into Major League Baseball. I believe so, yes. So um, we're going to go over the careers of the gentleman here uh, to my left. We'll talk about some some all-star, just and, and we'll go over the Major League Baseball season up to this point and first impressions that we have and you know who we think we can make a run into the playoffs. If you're watching right now, make sure that you can comment on Facebook, send your questions across. Um, before we get into sort of the meat and potatoes of the interview, I definitely want to take a few moments to recognize our sponsors who without 520 uh without them i can't even talk today it's just it's late it's a haircut. I, you know it's the haircut my smarts just sort of left you know exactly. all right there we go and there so is uh as andy calls it the hot squatch right yeah, exactly. <laughs> which is wow okay i'm gonna leave that one alone yeah, because uh better. that conversation doesn't go anywhere good that's right. Um, you know, I kind of want to go retro and kind of introduce our sponsors the way they kind of came in as our show gets a little Certainly. bit older. I want to start with Meech's. I right? know Meech's was our very first sponsor here at 520 Sports Talk. Meech's Fine Mexican Food on 4th Avenue. They do a great job. They do catering. I've uh, been around since um, since I've been around, since 1976. Yeah. And they, uh, it's, it's fantastic Mexican food. Make sure to visit them on uh, 2908 South 4th Avenue. They're their uh, phone number and everything is on the screen. Meech is catering.com. They do catering for some of the bigger companies, so you know it's going to be quality stuff. Good yes. food over at Meech's. Oasis Air Conditioning and Heating was, our, I believe, our second sponsor. I actually had uh, lunch with David Marietta today, and, and I'll tell you, they are every uh, everybody's air conditioning is breaking down with this oppressive heat. So, I know. Uh, you know, the, the, the guys out in the air conditioning world are, are definitely uh, busy, but uh, if you do have any... Uh, Issues with your air conditioning, or you want to make sure it's in uh, tip top shape? Go ahead and call uh, Oasis Air Conditioning. Tip, <laughs> tip top shape. You like that one? Yes. Right. There you go. <laughs> tip the cap right there to you. So uh, the phone number is on the screen right now. Make sure you give them a call uh, if your AC is not working properly. You should have had it tuned up. You know, probably about April. Yeah, we we told you. Yeah, <laughs> we warned um, you. By the way, I want to take a step aside. Bill is wearing one of our new Adidas shirts uh, that. Uh, we had a little partnership with Adidas. Thank you to Coach Dave, uh, David Thomas for mm -hmm. hooking us up with that. So We will also have another one, I've been told, the end of October. So nice. uh, the production will be uh, in time to uh, get uh, get them in this Christmas time. Definitely. Stocking. I did not wear my racer back tank top, mostly because it's my wife's. Yeah, that would look but, kind uh, of funny. It would, That's but for a different it show. It defines my back, <laughs> according to Brittany Palma. That's so right. 
we'll get to Brittany Palmer in just a second. So I'm trying to go through some of our, our you know, the older uh, older sponsors. Mm-hmm. I know TucsonAlist.com has been around since the Morana football team, since we've mm-hmm. been interviewing them. So TucsonAlist.com, if you're looking for a quality service provider, TucsonAlist.com is who you want to talk to. Um, I kind of, I'm just trying to, you know, go through a lot of these. We've got, you know, our where we're going to be broadcasting from next week. Actually, I won't be here next week. I'm going to be um, vacationing in California, That's visiting right. for my grandma's hundredth birthday. Happy birthday, grandma! She's turning a hundred. Right. I know. Awesome. I'm going to try and submit her uh, photo to um, Willard Scott with the Smuckers, <laughs> the yeah. Smuckers thing yeah. on the Today Show. I don't know if he still does that, but if All so, right, he's alive. I think Willard yeah. Scott's almost 100 years old. I know, but uh, she'd get super embarrassed by that, so I'm definitely going to send it in. So um, Bill will be broadcasting with Jerry Beasley, and I know we're going to have um, the Tucson Turf 7-on-7 seven seven champ- national, national champion champions. Team. Yes. So they'll be uh, at Stray Dogs. That brings me to Stray Dogs. Uh, River and Stone fantastic food every time we go there it's just something new that they have on their menu it's fantastic and i know we're going to be rolling a picture here very shortly of the 17 inch donut which premiered on ginormous foods on the food network and i mean there if you is. see that it just it looks so good i, mean, I don't know if you can see that that giant yeah. donut but it uh it's literally 17 inches it's over as big as a three small pounds. car tire <laughs> and uh they served that when we were watching the uh the show live when, when it premiered so we want to thank you stray dogs uh, for sponsoring here, I'm 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 really drawing a blank. But you know what? We couldn't uh, we couldn't do this without the gentleman who's right behind our guest today, which is Chris Lawler from Nova Home Loans. Yeah, with this the brand is the new Nova, banner. Yeah, the Nova Home Loan Studio, sponsored by Chris Lawler, LoansbyLawler.com. Uh, he is now promoted to vice president. Yes, of the United States. Also got to talk to him today. Yeah. Great guy, and uh, does you know does the best. If you have any home loan uh, information needs? Yeah, he's the guy to call because yeah. uh, he never sleeps. Thank you, uh, David. We just mentioned you before, so rewind a little bit. You can watch what uh, we were talking about you a second ago. So thank you, David, for joining us. But loansbylawler.com, uh, also 260-4846. He's also putting on the Harry Potter Charity Ball, which is coming up in just a couple of weeks, July 29th. So get your tickets for the Harry Potter Charity Ball. Uh, I am Team Gryffindor. Um, <laughs> again, I don't know what that means because I haven't watched the Harry Potter movies, and Chris will probably hate me for that. But, you know, i got to be honest about it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we also want to thank um, Snap Fitness. Okay. Uh, John Marshall, great personal trainer. Bill Bill gets just, trained by John Marshall. Just got done finishing second in the powerlifting. I saw weekend. that he had yeah. he had a whole bunch of stuff there. He, it's he on put the up like a page. Five hundred forty pounds. I was. Yeah. I I can't do that. He'd be great at a keg party. You know. Yeah. Here, give me, give me yeah. He'd say, "We'll just switch this one around." He right. picks it up like it's like it's a bottle cap. Exactly. Um, and uh, we have The Rock down on uh, Park and Ninth. Yes, and actually on uh, Sundays now, they uh, Riley has her uh, beach bar set up in the back. Nice. So, uh, you know, go out, um, get some sunshine, hopefully, you know, with the monsoons, it won't be quite as uh, as hot, but uh, they have it all set up. They've got sand out there. They've got uh, beach drinks. It's all uh, set up. Beach with, you know, drinks. Yeah. Uh, beach huts and surfboards. <laughs> and Tiki torches. Kind of, yeah, it's like you can paddle out in the Rito or something. Very so. nice. <laughs> I also want to thank you to Andy Taylor for not only offering me the um, the hot squatch, but uh, but for producing our show here at 520 Sports Talk, thank you so much to uh, Andy Taylor Media and andytaylormedia.com. And also uh, our newest sponsor. Uh, I, we have two new two newer sponsors, uh, Aqua Solutions by Christina. Yes. Um, they do everything but dig the hole. So if you have a pool, you need good chemicals. They use really good chemicals so it's not going to hurt your skin. They're also really big into drowning prevention. They do a lot of different things. Yes, they do. They for, work for with the Tucson Fire prevention. Department on that. <clears throat> so uh, make sure to give them a call, 408-0500. Um, you're going to have pool season for the next three or four months. So make sure that everything's taken care of. Don't want any <laughs> algae in your pool. It's nasty. So The rate we're going, you may be able to swim till mid-December. I know. <laughs> I know. But it's actually been pretty mild. I've actually been okay this yeah. summer as opposed to others. Um, and then A uh, brand new one. A brand new one, uh, Brittany Palma. With A to B, uh, First Heritage Realty, the A to B team. So, um, sorry, if you could hear me a couple times, it's because I was learning how to speak in tongues for a second there. <laughs> nice, all right. But, um, but yeah, Brittany Palma, First Heritage Realty, the A to B team. Um, you can see her there. And 520-270-7958, moving the healthy way. That's right. And if you remember, uh, maybe a month or so ago, uh, she was actually uh, one of our guests on the uh Female fitness competitors and five two zero the body episode. Yeah, five two zero the body episode. So, so yeah, 
definitely uh, give her a call for your uh, real estate needs. Yes, and so what you can do is when you look to buy a home, you can go ahead and talk to Brittany first, and then you can go ahead and get qualified through Chris Lawler. That's right. And you got a whole, you got the whole real estate team right there. But we should definitely have you know that expertise meets meets customer service when you're working with the toughest agent in town. Call Brittany Palma with your home buying and selling needs. Two seven zero nine seven nine five. Then when you buy the house, you can go to Stray Dogs and celebrate. <laughs> I know it's, it all kind of comes together. That's you can right. just go. You can go hopping from restaurant to restaurant, and then go down to Meech's and have a margarita or something like that. But all right. Thank you to all our sponsors because yes. without you guys, we wouldn't be around. So we appreciate your uh, support. Definitely. Uh, a couple new sponsors coming uh, for the website, which will be debuting soon and, and for, for remote broadcast and things mm-hmm. like that. So we'll definitely let you know when that happens. But to the moment we've all been waiting for. Yes. So we have, it's a pretty rare opportunity. And, and I'm, I, I feel very honored to get to sit with two World Series champions. I mean, it's, it's, it's rare. You don't get to really do that much, and, and it's, it's kind of cool that, that we, Indeed. in the position that we're in, you know, two, uh, two dorky dudes, you know, in Tucson. Well, I mean, one, I grew that, up, you know. you know, admiring. I was always a Dodger fan, you know, but I, I, when we did go to L.A., uh, we, always had, we always picked the series when the Reds came to town, and it was just they were always epic. And, uh, and then with Ed, he just struck me out. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I just got struck out when I took batting practice with the Pima team. So, it's, you know, uh, away it goes. Um, but let's, let's kind of start here. Uh, Pat, to my left, what are sort of your first impressions of the season so for the 2017 season? Um, and, and more into that, what, what did you expect and what has surprised you so far? Well, I mean, everybody's talking about the home runs that are hit. Yeah. Not just home runs, but long home runs. Yeah, why there's so many home runs hit this year in the last couple of years than there have been in a long time. So I, I think one of the things I'm thinking of is that Ed probably thinks the same thing. Is that we were pitching, you know, you could the, the same ball would be in play for a few innings if it didn't get fouled off. Right. Now, as soon as the ball touches the ground, they bring a new one in. Yeah. Oh, so interesting. It, just, it just never ends. I, I would I like pitching when the ball been hit around a little bit, you know? Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, it's interesting that uh, you're right. Whenever the ball touches the dirt, they throw it out. It's It's crazy. Um, you know, when we were playing, if you saw a little bit of a scuff on the ball, you learned to, to throw it and use it to your advantage. Yes. But uh, now the umpires, you know, even foul balls, they just like a ground ball that's foul to the third baseman. They throw it in the stands. They they go through so many baseballs right now. It's incredible. What, yeah, what do you think is the reason be, behind that? Well, there used to be, when we played, it was the National League had their own ball and the American League had their own ball. And the American League ball was a little bigger because the stitches weren't as, the seams weren't as high up as the National League. Okay. And so... Uh, you know, you, you see, if you threw a ball in the stand, like I said, you got they find you. You flip the ball in the stands. <laughs> and, yeah, and so, and I remember one game I was pitching, and I didn't like the baseball, so I threw it back to the umpire. And a couple of innings later, he threw it back to me again. You know, I say, I don't want this ball, and he goes, Oh, I was just testing you. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Who was so, it, Jerry Crawford? <laughs> probably right. was. Yeah. So how does that work? I mean, you know, because you didn't have interleague play, you no. know, so basically, you know. In the World Series, you know, I, I mean, I know you, you played against the Red Sox in, um, in that World Series. Yeah. And so do they just use the ball of the home field? I think they, yeah, na- they use the National League ball and the American League ball with the other league. And the umpires are different, too. Yes. You know, the, Mer- the American League ball had that out, you know, that big chest protector. That right. Ball. And then National League had inside their shirt. Mm-hmm. So the National League was a low ball league because they could get down low. And the American League was more of a high ball. Yeah, the high ball. strike. Yeah. Right. Basketball league. Yeah, Ed and I actually were talking about that before the yeah. the, the show tonight about the. Plus, uh, you know, the American League National League had more, more AstroTurf. Yes, leaders. right. Yeah. So yes. it was a lot faster. It was a faster league, uh-huh. and the American League was more like home runs, and National League was more ceiling bases, singles, doubles, ball ball. Yeah. So Pat, when you played in Cincinnati at Riverfront, did did they always have AstroTurf, or did, did no, they, they ever had grass? No, it was always they always had AstroTurf there. Okay. In fact, when I was when I was playing, if somebody would have said. 20 years from now, what are the fields going to be like? I said they'll all be AstroTurf. Because mm-hmm. most of the teams had AstroTurf. For a while, there, the National yeah, League had, almost was. Well, they had to have because they were dual-facility stadiums. Right. So, right. you know, they, otherwise, they football would start in September, mm-hmm. and the field would be all ripped up. So they had AstroTurf, but, you know, grass is so much better to play on. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you get different hops and everything like that. It's, I mean, yeah. it's got to be a completely different action. Well, the ball the skips so much. You know, they, we, ours was just concrete with, us, you know, fake grass on top. So you you know if it rained a little bit, you know you know infielders get some rockets hit at them and skip right. on them. Yeah, yeah, because I remember old Candlestick had that oh, had that turf, but yeah. then San Diego and L.A. had the grass. Yeah, yeah. 
So you were mentioning a lot of, not only a lot of home runs, but a lot of long home runs. Now, the home run derby aside, there's been some 480-foot bombs. I mean, just hit, I mean, Gary Sanchez, John Carlos Stanton, Aaron Judge. I mean, they're just teeing off right now. What are, what are you attributing the distance of these home runs to? I mean, what's what's different now than 10 years ago when you're not getting as many home runs? I mean, was it, is it quality of pitching? Is it, I mean, just the guys are just getting bigger with better hand-eye coordination? Or what is it? Well, about everybody's trying to get a home run now. You know, you can strike out 100, 150 times a season. That's no big deal. Back then, you didn't want to strike out. If you were a home right. run hitter, you might have struck out 100 times. But now you think Mike Trout struck out 170 sometimes last right. year. Mm-hmm. So everybody's trying to hit home runs. And, you know, the, the, the new stadiums are a little, not as big as Small, the, you know, a little smaller. Uh-huh. Yeah, so. I know, plus chicks dig the long ball. <laughs> you know, what's interesting is, is I, I attribute a lot of it to the bats. The bats that they're making nowadays are so hard, the wood, and they're so streamlined. I mean, I see the bats, I picked them up, and, <clears throat> you know, I worked with the Diamondbacks in spring training the last six years. These bats are, are incredible. And, you know, years ago, the bats were were nothing like they are today. These guys can swing a bat like like it's a fungo. A fungo is a real skinny bat that they hit infield balls right. with. Yeah. But uh, I attribute that. I think the ball is really hard. I think, um, you know, I think the strike zone is incredibly small. I think it's just a big disadvantage for pitchers. And, you know, I, I never really liked <clears throat> to – you know, to, to instant replay and all that stuff, but I think it's been great. I really think they ought to get rid of the home plate umpire and 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 have a robot call balls and strikes because umpires miss so many pitches, and it's such a big ad- advantage for the hitter because, you know, the pitcher throws a great pitch, the umpire misses it, then then he has to throw another strike, and then and the next one the guy's hit. So, yeah, I was talking. I was talking to Ed too. Remember the uh, world, the College World Series game with Oregon State where the. The umpire was, you know, calling strike six inches off the plate. You know? Oh, it was that terrible. Was, that, was cra- that was crazy. It's like, what game are you watching? Or, see, I, yeah. I, I like, I don't like the box. I think because it used to be the umpire, every, every umpire a little different strike zone. Right. Mm-hmm. And you knew the strike zone. So sometimes be a little far outside, give you a couple inches outside, nothing inside. And so if you knew the strike zone, the umpire was consistent with it. Everything was okay. Right. So I remember the first first game I played in the major leagues against Atlanta. I was pitching. And I threw a pitch just outside the off, uh, it was a, it would have been a ball in the minor leagues. So you know when you're pitching and you throw a pitch that the umpire calls a strike, you kind of check, look at the hitter, what he's going to your reaction is, and the hitter did nothing. So I threw <laughs> a pitch about an inch away, and he did. It was a strike too. I'm thinking, man, you know that's but that's that umpire has right. outside strike zone. Yeah. But that little that's tough. The umpiring is tough. Right. I mean, it is you know that ball's coming in. You don't know what it's going to be a fastball, breaking pitch, and you got the hit, the catcher there moving around like that. It's t- it's not easy being a home plate umpire. You know, and the, and the catcher, as you guys know too, you know he'll bring it in. Oh, yeah, he'll yeah. catch it and bring it in. You know, so yeah, yeah. framing, That's, framing the pitch and everything. And I mean, some of them are pretty obvious about it. I mean, they'll catch it. The, 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 the yeah. glove zips back in there. But the catchers that these guys had, though, when they played in the in the in the majors, though, were incredible. Some of the catchers that you look, you know, Johnny Bench with you know with uh, with the Reds. Uh, you had uh, Jaeger and Ferguson with the Dodgers. Right. You know, and then you know the different catchers. Jerry Grody had. with the Mets. Jerry Grody, good yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, but you know, Ed Duffy was, Dyer. Yeah, Ed was talking about the bats. I think you know, used to, the bats. They don't they don't weigh as much either. They're a lot lighter than they used to be. We're like thirty five, thirty two, mm-hmm. something like that. Now they're they're a lot lighter. Everybody's just trying to hit home runs. You know, there's a there's a new measurement now, and I want to get your opinion on this because now there's new statistics that are always added. You know, and baseball is so numbers oriented now. Everything is is this and. You know, the war numbers are now, the you know, well, not now, but the last few years, wins above replacement have been such a big thing. Mm-hmm. But now, and I can't think of the name of the term right now, but now they're really measuring. Sabermetrics. Well, right sabermetrics, but the, the one specific I'm talking about is they're, they're analyzing the speed of the ball off the bat. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I can't think <laughs> of the. Launch angle, it's called, I think. Yeah. I think it's a launch angle. So basically, they're, you know, they're basically saying, you know, the pitch will be coming in at 97 miles an hour. But it's leaving the bat at 114, and and apparently they're using that somehow, and I can't figure yeah, out how. How do the scouts use that? I mean, what what advantage is that to have those type of stats? Well, it's interesting because Pat brought up a great point about you know strikeouts and stuff, and and guys don't care about striking out anymore, and you know there's guys, uh, you know I I coached Mark Reynolds in rookie league, and and he came up as a Diamondback, and the kid struck out 200 times in a yeah. season twice, mm-hmm. and the Diamondbacks got rid of him. Actually, he's doing really well this year with the Rockies. He's right. having a really good year. But, you know, years ago, guys took pride in being able to put the ball in play. And now, 
Um, you know, like like we're talking about, a hundred and a hundred strikeouts is is nothing. And you're seeing guys strike out really good hitters, you know. But you look at the great hitters of of the old years. Yogi Berra never struck out. You know, I played with some really good players. Pud Rodriguez was a catcher that played. I think he won 13 Gold Gloves or something, mm-hmm. and he was considered a great catcher. But he was a guy that swung at any pitch, but he did not strike out. He put the ball in play. Uh, it's just a lost art nowadays because you know guys. You know they want to make money, and and to make money, you got to hit home runs. So that's that's really become the bottom line. Another hitter that the Pudge reminds me of, and is not as a catcher, but uh, Vlad Guerrero. Yeah, he'd swing at anything, but he'd hit a home run that would bounce in front of the plate. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's how wildly he would swing at everything, but he wouldn't strike out that much. Exactly. So, yeah, and Joe DiMaggio, that yeah. guy might strike out eighteen times right. in the season. It was amazing. Right. But then you had other hitters like, you know, Mantle struck out yeah. a lot. Uh, Dave Kingman, I mean, he either struck well, out yeah, or he hit a home run. Yeah, you know? right, yeah, yeah. So. But you look at hitters nowadays, you look at like an Albert Pujols who just hit, what did he hit, his 600th home run or something. Right. Mm-hmm. And he does not strike out. He's one of the older, old school guys that he puts the ball in play. And look at, you know, I think Mike Trout has been, you know, top three in the MVP the last five years. I don't think he strikes out a ton like some of these ball players do nowadays because he's always hitting 330 or or 340, but you know, to me, that I, people don't want to. I don't want people don't want to come see strikeouts. They do want to see home runs, but you know, I think Pat and I, being former pitchers, you know, we want to see the games three to two or, or two to one. But you know, I think those days are over. Yeah. Well, and you're getting. I mean, you're getting really ridiculous scores. I get ESPN updates on my phone all the time, and you know, the teams that I'm following, and it's final score fifteen to three. You're know, like, well, at Coors okay, Field, yeah. <laughs> no, not even at Coors Field. These uh, are like Red Sox scores or, or Diamondback scores. There's, you don't see those, you know, two one, three two, even four three matches. I mean, they're all eight five. You know, there, there's very few low scoring games, and and it really takes that ace pitcher mm-hmm. to start, you know, throwing a real gem of a game. I mean, there's been a few really close no hitter, you know, a lot of no hitter watch this season, which is nice to see, yeah. because you're getting a lot of quality innings in. Um, I, oh, well, pitching's kind of changed for the most part, too. I mean, back in Pat's day, you had a lot of complete games, even in your day. You had a lot of complete, you know, a pitcher goes five innings now. It's like you got a middle reliever, you got a, you know, you got a setup guy, you got a closer. Yeah, we so start, you might see four or five pitchers, you yeah, know. We started in the C, we start the season with nine pitchers because you had off days the first mm-hmm. April. Then we bring a 10th tenth, tenth pitcher in. Now guys have 12, 13 pitchers on their staff. So, right. you know, they all these guys backed up, ready to throw. So, you know, it's got a little tougher on the hitter. That way, you pitch one guy will throw five innings, and the next three or four innings, like different pitchers. Yeah, you see the guy yeah, twice, and then, you're, yeah, and then another yeah, pitcher's yeah. in. So, yeah. You know, well, what, what's really sad is me because I always pride myself, and I was a starting pitcher early on, throwing a complete game. Now, when you get to 100 pitches, you know, they always go, oh, 100 pitches, you know, that, then they're thinking about getting the bullpen in. Well, you know, 100 pitches is nothing back in the day. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Nolan Ryan used to throw 300 innings in a season sandy yes. koufax yeah shoot nowadays these guys are they throw 200 innings and it, it's it's a big deal but you know i think they're the, the elbow surgeries i think is really what scares a lot of people nowadays because more and more young pitchers are having that tommy john surgery so they're really There's trying so to protect many pitchers them. that had that yeah back yeah. in the day it was tommy john that's why they named it and yeah very yeah. few pitchers had it but you know now it's i mean even in college you see uh you know tommy john surgery on some of these pitchers well you know they grew up in there there's never an off season that's so right. These, these That's guys true. throw year round, and like they'll have like an all star high school baseball tournament out at out at uh, the park out there, Keno, and it's in January. So if you're pitching in January, you've been throwing in December, mm-hmm. and, you're, yeah. and the season starts in March. You're you're pitching year round, a mm-hmm. game situation. Yeah, that got to kill your arm. Yes. Well, when you look at someone, I mean, the the most probably notable newer pitcher that came into the league on a pitch count was Strasburg. Because he straight out of college, he had Tommy John surgery. Right at San Diego State. Yeah, and and comes into the league, and he's on. I mean, they're they're just wondering: Will he hit 175 innings? Will he hit 175 innings? Are we going to hold him back? Maybe only 120, 140 innings, and then just sit him for the rest of the season. And then they have this whole dilemma: how the team is good enough, where if they make the playoffs, mm-hmm. you sit him for the playoffs just because you want to save his arm for the long haul. And it's just mm-hmm. that that was a really. I, I didn't. I didn't like that. I didn't like that because it just takes away from what you're trying to do with your team. You're not trying to win this year. You're trying to win three years down the road. And what's the point? Yeah, he threw a lot. Of, he threw a lot of pitches in college. Too. Oh yeah. 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 I, I think Pat hit it on the head. What, what drives me crazy is the whole, 
you know, kids playing one sport. I was reading about, I didn't know a lot about Aaron Judge, but, you know, I saw where he was a three-sport athlete. I mean, look at this kid. He's six foot eight, 200 and what, 60, 70 pounds. He could have played easily basketball. He could have played football. He was a lineman size, yeah. I mean, the, the great athletes in of today, I played summer ball with John Elway. He was a heck of a baseball player. You know, look at Kenny Lofton. He he'd never played college baseball. He was, a, he was a basketball player. Kids nowadays, like Pat was saying, they're throwing a baseball the whole year round. It's just not good for the arm. Mm -hmm. you got to give the arm a break. And I think, plus, kids get burnout. You're playing a sport 12 months out of the year, you know, you're going to hate the sport because you need to get a little bit of a break from it. Yeah. And there's a difference between, you know, going out and playing toss in the off season, long toss, and then pitching in a game. Because right. pitching in a game, you're far, you're ready to go. Yeah, and you're bringing it every single time. Stress on your arm. And that's, you know, these guys, elbows hurting all the time. Now, do you think, uh, either of you, do you think that uh, that has something to do with, you know, the American players as opposed to, like, the uh, – you know, the Dominicans, the Venezuelans, you know, some of the Latin American players. There's more influx of, of major league players now from those areas areas than, uh, you know, than there was maybe, you know, especially in your in your era, Pat. Well, they have, right, they have academies over there now. So yeah, those guys, yeah. it's almost like you go to school there and you're there, you live there. So these guys are playing, you know, they're they're working with these young guys, like almost, well, you're kind of year-round type thing. Yeah, so they're learning the game and. Yeah, they're, they're eating better, and they're lifting weights, or anything like that, yeah. I, I still remember, and I'll never forget this, I mean, the center fielder you had, I mean, Cesar Geronimo could throw a guy Ooh. out from the track at Riverfront Stadium. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he just had a cannon. <laughs> remember my first, I came up with Houston. I got traded right for spring training in 74. So I was out in the outfield, and, you know, they have the pitching coach with a bucket of ball, playing second base, all the balls come in. So he, he yells at me to come get, a, come get some baseball. So he looks at the baseballs, and Geronimo's on center field in the other field. And he goes, let's see if we have a better ball in the other field. So he yells over to you out there to Chief. And uh, are there any good baseballs there? And he, Chief holds up a ball and says, yeah. He says, well, throw it over. He, he just threw it like a nut. And it hit right <laughs> in the chest. I mean, from center field on one field to behind second base in the other field. Wow. He's right there. Yeah. And I go, man, this guy, he, he, he signed as a pitcher. Yeah, he had a cannon. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, it, just, yeah. it was incredible to watch that guy. Signed the New York Yankees. Defensively. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So um, I wanted to talk about, I mean, the, the All-Star game is going on right now, and we're going to get to that, but the Home Run Derby was yesterday, and there were some bombs. I mean, over 500 feet from Aaron Judge. And when to get it, to give you an idea of how big Aaron Judge is, take LeBron James and put a baseball uniform on him. Because he's 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, I mean, I think LeBron's 6'8", six, 6'9", six, 260. I think he's heavier, though. I mean, he, he could have, I mean, I was, I was looking at uh, on Twitter today, and... Uh, you know, our friend Jay Dobbins was right. like, "This guy is the size of an NFL lineman, and he's jacking the ball out of the, uh, you know, the ball." Well, yeah, Aaron Judge, they think they list him as like two eighty. Yeah, and LeBron probably he probably has twenty pounds on LeBron. Yeah, but what do you guys think of the new format of home run derby? Now, I mean, before, I mean, years ago, it just went back to you had ten outs, as many pitches as you can hit out of the park until you hit your ten outs, and now it's timed and there's seatings and there's a whole lot of this and. You know, it's it's sort of made for TV now. It's more of a show. That's exactly right. And it takes forever. Yeah, it, it does. And I, and I think you know, I don't, I don't like it personally. I think it because you're they're just swinging as hard as they can swing to see how far they can hit it. I think they should should have went back to the format where if you if you hit it and you don't hit a home run, it should be counted as an out. It should be more like a hitting contest. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, it'd be more skill that way. But when you see guys, I mean, I saw guys yesterday popping five and six balls up in a row. I mean, that, that to me, come on, anybody can go up there and do that. Yeah. You got Stanton who's six foot six or, or, you know, Giancarlo Stanton. And then you got judge is six foot eight And that first baseman for the, for the Marlins born. He's a monster. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was, he was launching some balls. So I, I think to me, it, the, the home run derby is a joke. It's too long. They should shorten it up. And plus, you see how tired those guys were getting yeah, swinging yeah. the bat. I mean, they were um, the kid from the Dodgers, um, Bellinger. Bellinger yeah. was gassed. Yeah, you know, and, you know, it, it's just they should make it shorter, and it should make more of it like a skills thing than a home run derby. It was interesting to watch his dad pitch to him. I, I did enjoy that part. I mean, some of the smaller stories inside that were kind of cool. Um, I think uh, in the old timers game, they don't have that. Anymore. Well, they don't. They don't have a lot anymore. It's and it's just, you know, I think it's just kind of watered down, and it's all based on the home run derby, and it's just I. Well, all the other sports they do. Well, aside from the Pro Bowl, which is another story, we're going to talk, worry <laughs> yeah. about that. But 
basketball and hockey, they do a skills competition. They have the three-point contest. They have the dunk contest. Yeah. In hockey, they, they have, have the, the slap shots, the rookie game, shots, and the, the rookie, whole, game, yeah. rookie sophomore game. They've got all that stuff. And they're trying to make this for TV because they're really, you know, every sport is trying to extend to 12 months of coverage now. There's, they're trying to have no off season right. with all the coverage. I mean, look, look what basketball is doing. They go straight from the end of their series to the draft to free agency. And then they got all these, you know, they, they're trying to extend the season into they got monster a month contracts. Off and, then they're, and then they're back in and camp. And summer again, ball. So. And, you know, with all the new draft picks, now they got summer ball. Yeah. So they're just trying to promote the entire year. Um, but if you look at baseball, I mean, baseball is probably the purest sport of any of the major league or major pro sports. I mean, other than the DH, there hasn't been a lot of changes no. in baseball. <laughs> where basketball, you know, I mean, when I was in high school, I mean, there was no three point shot. Uh, you know, the dunk was outlawed because of Lou Alcindor at UCLA, and it was just brought back in uh, in my senior year in high school. I mean, I, I'm not a dunker, but you know, it's just. There's, there's just the evolution of different sports has a lot of uh, rule changes, a lot of additions, some subtractions. But baseball in itself, other than the DH, has been, has been, per, you know, pretty yeah, pure sports. It's, it's been, it's of all the sports, it's a, it's a sport that has changed the least. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can go if you go on a watch a game from 1920, you come out today, and it's similar. The other sports have really changed a lot. Yeah. yeah. And one thing I like about baseball is the unwritten rules. Yeah. You yes. Know, there's not a lot of hot dogging out there, no. you know, show and things like that. And because, and I remember Bryce Harper was saying before the season he was going to be doing that because that's it was going to have some fun. You didn't see him doing it because right. he's going to get drilled if he did, you know. Right. But that that the players are really enforcing that, and that that's I like that because you watch a game a college game on ESPN and some guy make a great catch in the outfield and just get up and throw the ball in. He's not celebrating like that. Exactly. Oh, he yeah. sees the that's... guys doing it in the, in the major leagues. Or even when Ed played at, at Arizona for Coach Kendall, I mean, you know, when you went and took the field, you sprinted to your position, you know. I mean, you were full full on sprinting, and you know, it just it was, you know, Jerry, you know, had a very professional demeanor to him. You know, the Wildcats showed it, and uh, you know, obviously a very successful coach. You know, that was interesting. The U of A football team did that under Mike Stoops. At the end of every quarter, they would sprint down to the field, the mm-hmm. other end of the field. So it's pretty rare that you that you would see that. We do have a Andy found a picture here from TBO.com. Of uh, of Aaron Judge, right, Andy? Yeah, there's that comparison with a couple other big uh, athletes. Oh yeah, so we're gonna see we're gonna see it coming up. Um, I think there is there's one of him next to a smaller. Oh, there we go. Oh wow, so it's oh there's Demar Dotson, Andre the Giant, <laughs> Shaquille, and Andre the Giant. <laughs> so, but he, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's a big boy. What was nice, I. I think it was. I don't know if it was on um, Jimmy Fallon or or, Jim, um, or Kimmel, but Aaron Judge was on. I think it was on Fallon, and because he's a rookie, and he was, you know, no one really know. Everyone knows who Aaron Judge is, but they don't really know what he looks like. So he was interviewing people at this desk and everything, talking about it. So what do you think about Aaron Judge? Oh yeah, I love Aaron Judge. He's he's great. Blah blah blah. And then. And they have no idea they're talking to Aaron Judge. It was. It's a really funny. It's a really funny <laughs> sketch that they do. And then, like, all of a sudden, like, he'll put a Yankee cap on because he was just had his hair. You know, he didn't have a cap on it. So he throws his cap on. They're like, wait a second. <laughs> and they realize who it is. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Getting back to the unwritten rules, which some people love that and some people hate that. I love a sport that polices itself, mm-hmm. which you have in, I mean, really in two sports. You have it in hockey and you have it in baseball. Because with the hockey, you have the enforcer. Mm-hmm. You have the people that are willing to throw down, you know, throw your gloves off. And then... And then if you if you pull a bonehead move in baseball, you're going to get plunked. I mean, that's just there's no way around it. And I think that there's the people that say that that detracts from the sport. I don't think they really get it. Well, I think there's a lot of strategy in in baseball that you don't find in other sports. I mean, there's there's hit and pitch counts. You know, you don't run on this count. Uh, you know, if you're a pitcher, you know, in, you know, you can sit there and waste a pitch in the dirt, see if the guy's going to chase it. Uh, you know, that type of thing. You don't see. You know, a Tom Brady throwing a, a ball away on purpose just to get to third down or something like that. You know, it's just, no, not to get to third down, yeah, but they'll exactly. throw it away if they have yeah. no play, right, just so they don't get right, sacked exactly. or something but, like that. But, but that's that's, a, that's about it. Yeah, that's a, that's a different situation. But just they, you know, they don't waste it on purpose. They wait. You know, he throws away because he's under pressure or something like that. Where a pitcher, you know, it's a little different story. Right. A hitter, you know, you know, it depends. You know, I mean, the scouts are ter- tremendous in baseball. You know, they know, I mean, you know, with Pat and Ed and stuff like that, you knew what pitch to throw on a certain count to every single hitter that you faced. So. Yeah, we didn't, you know, we called our own pitches. 
and now the coach calls every pitch. Ed and I were talking about before, you know, high school, you know, little league, pony league, all the way high school. Coaches call every pitch. Mm-hmm. Catcher looks over there. So the pitcher, they don't really understand. They're just throwing pitches. You know, we did. We never. We just threw. What we threw. You know, you were a sinker ball pitch, kept it down low. No matter who, no matter who was hitting. Even the girls, when I, when I was covering the, uh, the Arizona softball team yeah, last season, I mean, yeah, it's like, like uh, you know, uh, McQuillan or Tooley, you know, they have the wristband on and they'd look at it and see what, you know. Well, what they also look to the side and then all of a sudden there'd yeah. be a clipboard and then they would kind of like do this and then they yeah, show the exactly. side in front of the clipboard and then they would look and then they would, you know, call their pitch and everything. Yeah. So, so you play, you played, you played, you know, in the 90s. And 80s. Did you guys call your own pitches then or not? We did. And, and what's interesting now, what drives me crazy about it is when I was at the U of A, we, we had a series of signs that we used. And if you wanted to change a sign, you added or subtracted. So in other words, if a catcher puts down a one and you want a curveball, which is a two, you just swipe once and that gets you to two. And that speeds everything up rather than shake your head, shake your head, shake mm-hmm. your head. So if you wanted, say, for example, if you wanted a change up and he called a fastball, then you subtract and you go from one to four. So you speed everything up by doing this. I don't see anybody doing this anymore, and, it dry, and it's not that tough. It's not rocket science. You're just adding one, two to three. You know, I watch because you know when I was with the in spring training with the Diamondbacks, they would go over signs, and you know it it shouldn't be that tough. And you know if the catcher can get on the same page with the pitcher and they can work fast because then the infielders are ready to to catch the ball when it's hit. But you see, you know, they're talking about really speeding up the game. I don't know why they keep talking about that. The game seems like it's okay. If they should if they should call strikes, strikes, and balls, balls, you know, the strike shown is supposed to be from, you know, up here, mm-hmm. you're right below your, your nipple to, to your, knee. your knees. Yeah. They don't call that a strike. If they would call that a strike, it would speed the game sure. up. Sure, right. You Anything know, I, above your waist is a ball. Yeah. You never yeah. get the pitch at yeah. your waist, and that yeah. should be a strike. Yeah. Because the you know the hitters start swinging more pitches too, right? Yes. So they're taking pitches. Yeah, because they've got to protect the play. Yeah, yeah. So I, there was one situation that that caused a lot of this unwritten rule controversy earlier in the season, and that was the Bryce Harper incident, where the pitcher threw at him, and then Bryce tried to throw his helmet and missed terribly, and then and then got punched in the face. But basically, the whole the whole thought behind it, and I don't know whether it was admitted or not, that he basically hit hit two homers off him two and a half years ago in a playoff yeah. game, and so now he's going to get back at him by well, throwing at him. That's the and last I, time he faced That's the first time he faced him since yeah. then, so he's right. been waiting on that. Yeah, yeah. But it, to me... Baseball players have long memories. Yeah. But I mean, to me, because someone got the better of you, I don't I don't see, for me, and I didn't play, so I, I, have, I don't have a whole lot of perspective. If someone hit two home runs off you, you know, in, in a game, and you saw him two years later... Are you are you gonna sit there and plunk him just because he got the better of you? I mean, it seems like usually it's because you did something to, to a teammate, so now you're gonna get well, something back. But just because you didn't throw the right pitch or because someone someone hit one pretty hard off you, it doesn't seem like that warranted. You know. Well, that's because hit. Harper he hit the home run, and then he yelled. He kind of stared at the pitcher the whole way and he yelled him in the dugout. Oh, that he, makes a lot of difference. Yeah. Said he wouldn't have got hit. Yeah, because you don't stare somebody down like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, you don't admire your shot and, and things like that. I mean, That's those are about definitely as much reasons. Showboating as you'll see in right. baseball. You know? Whether yeah. there's the Jose Bautista bat flip. Right. I had, I had a coach tell me with the Reds that there's a pitcher named Stan Williams. He began pitch, pitch goes later, played for the Dodgers, a few other teams around. He got traded over to another team, and in, in spring training, in batting practice, he had faced this guy who kind of showed him a little bit. He hit him. <laughs> in and he batting he, practice. That's for last year, his own teammate. <laughs> 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 but that's, that, that's pretty wrong. That's the thing, though. I mean, but that's but that's you know one of the things that people don't understand. But and that's because everyone who's watching has a shorter memory. You know, that pitcher really remembered the showboating and everything like that. And you know, of course, he can't admit to it after the game. He's, oh no, the pitch just got away from me or something like that. But which is always kind of funny to me. So got a few new viewers on. Uh, Karen, uh, thank you for joining us. Karen and I worked at the uh, Tucson Fire Department together in communications. Uh, if you have any questions, comments uh, for Pat or Ed, uh, feel free to uh, you know put them on the comments uh, page on the uh, Facebook. Send your emojis. I know it's not uh, our usual, you know, right. <laughs> what do we have? Girls softball for about six weeks in a row. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It was it was uh, five two zero softball is, uh, is what right. I we wanted so. to rename our show. I before we get into the the rest, we got about twenty minutes left, and for the rest of the year, I want to mention our sponsors one sure. more time. So we're gonna go back in opposite order right now. Um, so for those of you watching right there, you know, with your binoculars and, and your TV, that's right. That's um, right. 
But we want to mention Brittany Palma with First Heritage Realty, the A to B team, uh, moving the healthy way. Um, so we want to thank her, our newest sponsor. Also, um, Aqua Solutions by Christina. And uh, make sure you're taking good care of your pool. Uh, and we it also will take have, care of you. Yes, and it will take care of you. Uh, and remember, no, no onesies, no making onesies in the pool. No, it's not. It's not good. It's not. I, There's a chemical for that, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, and then we also want to thank Stray Dogs, um, River and food. Stone. Great food will be there next week for the uh, Tucson Turf Seven uh, Seven Seven, seven, versus, seven V versus. Seven National Champions. Um, Snap Fitness, John Marshall, <clears throat> second place, power lifting. Um, just a crazy beast. personal training dude. He's got bright green hair now, kind of like my uh, my youngest child. Yes, yes. Um, Only during competition, though. Oh, oh okay. So yeah, that's, he'll be back uh, to normal tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Uh, also want to thank Andy Taylor Media, uh, home of the hot squatch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to let him live that one down. Oh. <laughs> um, or the macaroni at uh, Stray Dogs. <laughs> I know. Um, but uh, thank you, Andy, for, for making us look good every week, 42 straight weeks in a row. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, not 42 straight weeks. We did take last week off. Yes, we, ran, we did. We ran another uh, a replay of the Pima women's basketball team, which was a good show. Thank you for watching that, too. We had uh, we had several hundred views on Yeah, that, so. it was crazy it for was a like replay. A it was show. awesome. Yeah, exactly. And, Karen, thank you for the share. We appreciate that, getting it out to to all of your Facebook friends. Make sure that you're if you're watching, share the broadcast so everyone can see uh, a lot of the great insights from our World Series champion baseball players here. Because we get joining the best us. guests. I know, right? We do get um, the best guests. I want to thank Meech's on uh, 4th Avenue for sponsoring Fine Mexican Food. I want to thank uh, we already uh, Tucson A-List. Mm -hmm. um, looking for a quality service provider, TucsonA-List.com. Uh, David Murrieta and Oasis Air Conditioning and Heating. Don't don't wait till your air conditioner goes out to call him either. So Yeah, Keep talk that. to Ed about a broken air conditioner. <laughs> exactly. he, was, uh, he was telling us about that before the show. I'm trying to think of the uh, and the rock. The rock. Um, uh, enjoy the uh, the beach bar outside. Uh, mention five two zero sports. Uh, they'll give you a discount off of your cover charge. Opening song tonight by one of our <clears throat> by Slow own, Truck. Slow yeah. Truck. Yes, they also Slow. play at the Rock quite often. Yes, they do. Uh, so wonderful. So thank you very much to all of our sponsors. Oh, New oh, man, I feel bad. I, I get twenty lashes. Chris Lawler with Nova Home Loans. I mean, the signs right here. Nova Home Loans signs studio. as big as this room right now. The Nova Home Loan Studio. Chris Lawler, loansbylawler.com, 260-4846. And also, um, he's now the vice president so and senior loan officer. Make sure you are going to the Harry Potter Charity Ball Saturday, July 29th. And information is on the 520 Sports Talk page uh facebook page and it just scrolled across your screen right there so you can call chris lawler he'll hook you up with a good home loan and the um the harry potter charity ball so we do have some questions coming through for you so let's go ahead and get to those karen <clears throat> wants to know what are your predictions for who is going to win the world series this year or Man, who's I'm going gonna, to the world series yeah. i am gonna probably go with uh the dodgers and it'll be the dodgers and the astros and i think the dodgers will Interesting. All right. So kind of funny though, and and I'll pop this over to you, Ed. It's like you know the Astros, you know, had their spurts. You know, they they you know they they had you know some good teams for a few years, you know, in a row, and then they would go in the basement, and then they'd come back up. As soon as they changed the American League, they had one bad year, and they've been perennially up at the top every single year. You know what what do you attribute that to? They got some great young players. If you look at Altuve, I think he's a great story. I, my son is um, he's thirteen. He's five foot four and a half right now and Altuve is five foot six it's pretty it's remarkable really? wow. that this guy uh and he's hit I don't know how many home runs he's hit this year he's phenomenal it just goes to show you how great a sport baseball is it does not matter how big you are I mean I played with the hall of famer Pudge Rodriguez who was five foot eight I mean you you don't have to be but you don't have to be Aaron Judge and be six foot eight Mm -hmm. um, you can be smaller. It helps, obviously, if you're a pitcher and you're taller. You don't have to be Randy Johnson. But you don't see too many pitchers that are not six feet. But, you know, you see position players that are just have phenomenal careers. Uh, I think the Diamondbacks, I'm kind of pulling for them. I think they had a tough series with the Dodgers. Uh, but they're seven and a half games back. But they're still, if the season ended today, they'd make the wild card. But, yeah, you know, and I think with Zach Granke's having a good year, their pitching's been good. I think it's going to come out of the West. It's going to be 
the Dodgers or the or the Diamondbacks, but I think Houston probably going to be the other team, like Pat said. Right. Now, what do you think about? I think the reason, and I would agree with you on, you know, Dodgers v. Astros. I think the Dodgers would take it, but I think it comes down to pitching. I don't think the Astros really have that really great pitching staff unless they try and pick someone up before the trade deadline. It's going to come down to pitching because, I mean, obviously the Astros can hit. I mean, they've got one of the you know, best one to nine lineups in baseball. Right. But good pitching will always be but good. But pitching, hitting. I mean, they don't really have a you know, three big name starters like you will find on most other marquee teams. Yeah. So you I know, think you know, that's it's interesting about. because Kershaw has not been a good playoff pitcher, but I mean you watch him pitch. I watched him pitch a couple times this year. He's 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 basically unhittable. Mm-hmm. He punches out ten guys a game every game and uh especially at Dodger Stadium, he he doesn't give up anything but you know, when they got to go play in Houston, that's a whole other ballpark because it's 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 a bandbox and the ball flies. But it would be a great series to see either the Diamondbacks or the Dodgers against the Astros in the World Series. Do you think it ends up being like Astros, Red Sox in the AL Championship? You know, it could be. I think the Ast- the Red Sox have another good team, uh, but it, it's anybody's ball game. There's a long ways to go. I think, um, you know, we got a lot of games left, but... Um, you don't win. You don't win the season in April or May. Right. But you no. can certainly lose it. Um, if the if the Diamondbacks and the Ast- and the, Do- the Dodgers don't look like they're going to give any ground, but I just don't think how they can keep it up. But who knows? I mean, 162 games is it's a long. Game. It's a long season. I mean, the problem is, I mean, like the Red Sox have a, an amazing pitching staff between Sale and Price, mm-hmm. Porcello, um, but they have some deficiencies in the infield. I mean, they don't have a third baseman. I mean, Sandoval is, I think, I don't know if he's still on the DL or if they just, you know, dropped him down and they're not going to bring him back up. Um, but they have some position woes. I mean, you have a lot of injuries, too, and Pedroia can't stay healthy. Speaking about short players, I mean, Pedroia is, what, 5'6", five, 5'7"? Five, mm-hmm. I mean, he's, you know, a little guy, but, I mean, that that, that guy can ball. I mean, he's you know, got... It's interesting. No one's picking the Cubs. You know, I was just going to. I was just going to bring that yeah. up, I, or the Indians. I mean, neither yeah. team is out of it. Yeah. I mean, Terry's a little. Yeah. You know, Terry's not in there right now. But I mean, neither right. team's out of it. But yeah, nobody. Everybody's kind of forgetting the Cubs and, and the Indians at this point. I well, know the Cubs were what? Are they, I mean, are they still under five hundred? They're close. They're close. I mean, they're, yeah. I mean, they're right there. But I mean, they're not. They're not the same team. I don't. You know. I mean. I don't know if it's their inspirational leader well, David that, Ross last you know well, from last season or too, that yeah. division too is is you know pretty bunched up as you know compared to the oh, West. weren't the Brewers ahead of the NL Central yeah I mean I don't know if they're, they're still five up there and a half games up the Brewers yeah, yeah so I mean the you know the Brewers are really getting it done right now another question's coming through yeah no one thought that the Cubs would make it back to the World Series much less win it so I guess you never know um, but I I just well, don't their see manager this is, is phenomenal yeah I just don't see the mojo Joe this year that I mean. The whole season last season was just, you know, from from top to bottom, they were, you know, the, almost running away with it in terms of the regular season. And then they were sort of the odds on favorite until you had really good pitching matchups in the World Series. They ended up yeah. taking care of business at the very end. Although I mean, some I mean, of it, remember on our last show uh, when you were here with uh, Bill Bates, uh, Pat, when we were kind of second guessing some of those. Uh, Pitching uh, moves that uh, Madden had made because uh, you know the, the guy was just sailing along. It's like, hey, let's just yank him. Yeah. <laughs> like, Thank you, you know, for the emojis coming about, across. By the way, know, John Lester of the Cubs. I mean, you pitcher. I can't. He can't. He doesn't throw the ball to first base. He doesn't like the field of no, position. No, he I've does not. I've never seen that before. Have you? You know, it's crazy because I I I work with the Diamondbacks for six years in spring training. They brought me in to help the left-handers with their pickoff moves and. I even reached out to the Cubs because my whole family uh, grew up in Dubuque, Iowa, and we're, and they're all Cub fans. And so I, I thought it would be a thrill to to work with them. And you know, I thought I could maybe help John Lester out because I did have a good pickoff move. But he won't even throw to first base. And I don't know why teams won't bunt on him. I don't know why teams don't run as soon as you get over there. But their catcher, they got rid of Miguel Montero because mm-hmm. he couldn't throw anybody out. Yeah. But their other catcher, Contreras, mm-hmm. is a really good thrower. But you know it's so hard to win back to back years. And, it is, and that's what's and, nice about baseball too is you don't get you know football. You get you know the Patriots have been there you know every year since two thousand one. Exactly, it's like, you know, or in basketball now too, the Golden State or Cleveland all the time. That's the nice thing about baseball is you're going to get a fresh World Series almost every single year. This this basketball season is going to be interesting though with all these max deals and everything. It's going to be. I mean, when you think that uh, Paul George goes to the Warriors. And then you've got Houston starting to form with Chris Paul and James Harden and JaVale McGee and all them. There, that's going to be an interesting season. The West is 
just stacked. I mean, the East is the East. It just, they stink. Exactly. But hey, Pat, I wanted to go back a little bit, and you know, when Sean was talking about uh, you know smaller players, and Ed was talking about them. Um, I don't know if you were with the Astros at the time, but he was one of my when he got traded to the Dodgers. He was actually one of the, one of the guys that I really used the toy to cannon? like. The toy cannon, yeah, <laughs> Jimmy Wynn. I remember, yeah, yeah, Jimmy Wynn. I mean, he, <laughs> and his his home run, Sean. I mean, yeah. it looked like a lazy fly ball and just keep going back and mm-hmm. back and back, and then all of a sudden it's in it's in the left field seats of Dodger Stadium. Yeah. So it was just. It was yeah. just, you know, the, he, he hit these just long fly balls that just, you know, ran out of room every time. And, yeah. and I used to love to listen to Vin Scully. He's like, back, yeah. back, back to the track, <laughs> to the wall. She's gone, you know. Well, you know, that the Astros had a really good farm system. Mm-hmm. And they just couldn't win in the major leagues. I mean, all the, they had a lot of talented players come through. You know, Pat Gillick was one of the scouts. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jim Bomber became a general manager. Jim Wilson started the scouting bureau. I mean, all these guys, Tal Smith, I mean, they they were just great scouts, but they just they just couldn't put a winning team together back then. And then back then, even and Ed knows this. I mean, because we were talking before the show how I got to go when I was in junior high onto the field at Dodger Stadium. All those guys came up from Albuquerque. I mean, they just had such a tremendous yeah. farm system. Yeah. Albuquerque could probably beat some of the lower tier you know, major league teams that you know in in that uh, in that area. They were just they were that good. You know, it's yeah. interesting because you talk about because my older brother Dave was a big Dodgers fan. You make a trip out there every year. Uh, but you look at their infield with Garvey and, and Lopes and Russell and say, look at all the size of those guys. They mm-hmm. were all little guys. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I played with Steve Garvey at the end of his career. Great teammate. Great guy. He was short. But I his mean, forearms yeah. were just the, Yeah, he yeah. called Popeye with those forearms. Yeah. But back then, you see a lot of guys... <laughs> you see a lot of guys that were shorter. Nowadays, yeah. you know, you yeah. see the Aaron Judges and the Stantons and... You know, some Paul Goldschmidt with the Diamondbacks is a monster, but I think you know, Russell was probably the tallest guy in that infield because I've been saying yeah. Lopes and Garvey were short. They were, all, and Davy Lopes was a little. Yeah, guy. how tall yeah. was Tony Gwynn? He's like five nine, five ten, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he yeah. seems like he was shorter. I think he just, you know, just his stature just made him look a little bit shorter than that. I just, he, he just seemed like when he was. In his batting stance, he just seemed like he was I, uh, a lot smaller. But if you guys follow me on Facebook, I actually, uh, you know, because growing up in San Diego, that was my team. After you know, I kind of left the Dodgers after Walter Alston uh, retired and stuff. But uh, there was the uh, 30th anniversary of Tony Gwynn's inside the park home run. And if oh, you know right. Tony Gwynn, he's not a speedster by any means, no. at least, especially at that point in his career. When he came up, you know, he was faster. But uh, he hit that uh, he hit that ball and and Brett Butler just totally missed it and you know and and Tony went for an inside the park over and it was just it was great. You yeah, know, you, you said something ahead. before that we started the show. You know, Ed and I both have world championship rings. Right. I just wonder how many other high school players in Southern Arizona. I know Ron Hassey does. Who else has? Mm-hmm. One? Is there anybody? It's else? interesting. I, I don't know. But, does Mark you know, Carrion have one? Mm, I don't oh, think so. Oh. Um, but it's interesting that you brought up the story about uh, who you were just talking Tony about. Tony Gwynn. You know, because I played with Tony. He was one of my favorite teammates. It's oh, sad excellent. that he passed away from, mm-hmm. you know, oral cancer. But, you know, I got a, I got called up in 1986 with the Padres my first time. And Tony, we were playing in the Astrodome, the old Astrodome. And I saw Tony steal five bases in one game. Oh, really? The guy, the guy wow. could run. He could run when he was young. Yeah. And people don't realize this. He could have played the NBA. He was a great basketball player. Yes, he was. Player. He mm-hmm. played for San Diego State. You know, and we, we talk about this whole thing about playing one sport, and I think it's killing the kids nowadays. Back then, you look at Dave Winfield, was a, could have played in the NFL. He was he drafted was, in all three sports. He was a basketball yeah. player. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. some of these guys were great Elway. athletes. They played multiple sports. Elway. Yeah. Um, it's just sad that, um, you know, they get pigeonholed now, and these parents, you know, they don't let them do other things, which drives me crazy. Well, you, you get a few of them now. I mean, you look at, uh, like, Jeff Samarja, um, you know, who's pitching now. Yeah. But he would have been a first-round first, he would have been a first round draft pick as a wide receiver at Notre, Notre Dame. Dame yeah. But, you know, chose to play baseball. And I think a lot of it has probably has to do with the duration that you can play some of these sports. I mean, you can have a lot longer <laughs> baseball career than you can a football career. Right. And even though I don't think Tebow will ever make it to the majors, I mean, he's more of a ticket seller. But Oh, trust, ju- watch, watch well, this, he, I mean, watch he this season. He's going he's gonna to end up making that roster uh, just yeah, for his well, name. For, right, but is, I'm talking you know, about being successful in the, in yeah. the big leagues and stuff. You know, but, uh, when I first came up, when I was in the minor leagues, if you played – if you played baseball and got let go after your first year, you couldn't play any college sport. Hmm. And you were, I knew guys who were just great athletes, a good player of the sport. Then they changed that. You couldn't play if you played. You couldn't play baseball, and you see all these guys coming back and playing football now. You know, but they wouldn't have been able to do that before. So there's so many great athletes out there that 
could have played basketball or baseball, I mean sure. football, but they got released and that was, they sure. were done. Exactly. We have a couple more questions here. So we wanted to know, uh, which year did each of you leave baseball? I mean, I, play, I came back and played the minor leagues in 19, the Triple A with the White Sox in 1980. Yeah. I had some arm problems and I came back and that was it, yeah. Okay. And Ed? You, you weren't even born then, were you, in 1980? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I retired the first time in 19. Um, I retired when I was 40. And um, I just got really tired of the, the politics. I got sent down my last time and with the Phillies, and 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 I became I coached my very next year with the Oakland A's. Billy Bean gave me a job, but I went back and played at 45 in in the in the uh, Mexican League because I was playing catch every day, working with rehab guys. I was I was still throwing the ball. I felt great, so I went back at 45 and I actually pitched in the Mexican League and I was doing really well. And I ended up breaking my finger. I reached for a ball and hit the tip of my finger and broke it. But I think those five years that I didn't play, I think I could have kept playing, but my I lost the kind of the drive and the, the you know, the love of the game. You know, so I finally said twenty one years was enough. Now when you were at South Point in, in, in high school, did you play other than baseball? Did you play I did. Sport? I played football um, pretty much my whole life from eight to I played uh, football at South Point and I played basketball one year. Uh, which was too much to do three. So I, I did play uh, two sports, my basically three sports my whole life until mm -hmm. my junior year in high school. They gave up basketball. I did, I did too, just because you know, my dad was was a baseball player at Tucson High. But uh, you know, the one thing I appreciated about him was he let me pick my sport. I mean, I played little league. You know, um, you know when I that was my first. Uh, Sport, but then you know, after Ed struck me out, I just kind of lost. <laughs> oh, you lost. Okay, gotcha. No, what I, but, uh, a few people joined. Toby, Dee Dee, thank you so much for watching, and exactly. and uh, Toby, we'll see you next week. Toby's I, up in up, upstate New York right now. Oh, the nice. Cool weather. Well, Toby, enjoy for us. Um, a couple other questions came in here. The Cardinals have had it a little bit rough this year. A lot of people are blaming the th blaming the third base coach and the coaching staff. What was the cause, and and can it be you know can you really pinpoint what the issues are with a team like? I just think, you know, so much of it is determined by pitching. Pitching and defense wins games. I mean, you look at the teams that, like the Indians last year with their great bullpen to get to the World Series, and you look at the Cubs' rotation with, you know, Lester and Lackey and, and uh, Hendricks. They had a great rotation, and right. they had, you know, the fireball and lefty out of the bullpen, the guy that's thrown 106. So, you know, you got to be a little lucky to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, the Cardinals have done it year after year after year. Mm -hmm. Um, Mike Matheny is a good manager, but it's just it's so difficult to win every year. It's it's yeah. really competitive, yeah. especially with that long of a season. And the, you know, and and the it, Cardinals are always competitive. Always, yeah. always, always competitive. They always they have a good form system. They they do it the right way. Yeah, yeah and then hit it right on the you know you play 162 games, you're gonna get hurt. I mean, and it just depends on what you know what pe players go down. I mean, you know, especially if a you know an all star caliber player goes down and stuff. You know, right. You, you, know. you know, on the other side of that though. With the 162 game season, it's not the same as the San Antonio Spurs resting their their stars during a game like that. You can take a game or two off mm -hmm. when you are you know you know take a series off uh, in baseball. Unlike, or if you're in a slump or something. Yeah, like that. you know yeah, you yeah. can you, you can do something like that in baseball when when normally you know you can't you can't do that in other sports because the season's abbreviated. Like in football, it's six, 16 games. That's, that's what you have. So right. every game you're playing hurt or injured. Because or, or, or they, to, yeah, or they tell you, oh, you're going to rest your players so you can get a high draft pick, that type of thing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> well, that's that's kind of a joke. But Summer Fox from Pueblo uh, High School Pueblo High basketball, basketball. basketball joining us. Hey, Summer, how's it going? Uh, I see you You guys are world-beating every single tournament that you're playing, so congratulations. We only have two or three more minutes, so if you do have more questions you want to send across uh, to Pat Darcy or Ed Vosberg, please send them across right now. Um, programming note, I will not be here next week. Ed will be here with Jerry Beasley former professional football player and U of A star. Um, and All 10 linebacker. So the, uh, they will be with the uh, Tucson Turf 7v7 seven, uh, seven seven national champions. Um, so Toby and they were going to be doing some awards and everything for the guys and everything. It should be, should be a good show. I'll try and see if I can chime in from uh, no, most from, from the beach or something like that. Help me and, out from know. the beach. <laughs> so, um, but last, last opportunity, so what do you see are, are some of the keys for some teams in the second half of the season coming up? Well, you got to have a good bullpen, and uh, it's guys hit clutch hits, make, and make the plays in the field. Don't make mistakes, and that's, that'll do it. And the Dodgers, these teams are doing it. The, they're, they're, they're making the plays and hitting the right. home runs. 
mean, these guys, the Dodgers had whiskey. Young guys came out of nowhere, it seemed like. Yeah. 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 Man. It's like, where did you come from? Yeah, yeah they haven't even really missed, uh, you know, Gonzalez, their first baseman. He's been out, and, and you look at what, uh, you know, the young kid's done. Um, you know, they, they just keep retooling. You know, the Dodgers are going to be tough to beat with that starting rotation they have, and Kenley Jansen, their closer. But you know what? It's it's a long season. They're seven and a half games up. Um, you know, that lead could evaporate, but I, I wouldn't mind being in their shoes with the lead that they have. Yeah, would be good. I, I do think, I mean, there's something about the Diamondbacks this season that's really intriguing. I mean, I'm enjoying watching their games. They're having a great season. They're, it's just the Dodgers are, are having a better season so far. You know, and they're, they're pitching, you know, sometimes just on fire, and sometimes it seems really inconsistent. I'm just, you know, they, they definitely have a better hold of it now than they have. Um, I don't know, Bradley's been having an up and down, you know, sort of season. Uh, De La Rosa's, you know, has been having a great, Granky's been having a great season and staying healthy. I think that's the important part. I mean, Granky's been having some injury issues in the first few years of the Diamondbacks. Oh, so. I think he had a chip on his shoulder because he was so touted when he, when he uh, came from LA and all of a sudden he just, then, you know, his first year with the D-backs, he just, he didn't have a good year at all. And I think, yeah. uh, I think he just kind of recommitted himself to you know to to really buckle down. And I, th- I think the National we didn't talk about that they are a really good team too. Oh, they're yes, a great team. Yes. Sure, really a good team. point. They're a big time team. Yankees, you know, they got Yankees are the Yankees. Trades, yeah, <laughs> they are. I just I don't know if they're just going to have enough to, you know, to compete with the Red Sox in that division. You know, the Orioles the last couple of years were doing great and they were always on top of there, and then they just sort of faded off. And the Blue Jays haven't really been able to put anything together. Um, they, I mean, the Yankees and Red Sox are sort of the class of the mm-hmm. Hail East right now, and I'm sure one of them will come out and end up facing the Astros. You watch out for the Indians. Terry Francona yeah. is a guy that I was fortunate enough to play with and, and mm-hmm. for when he managed the Phillies. We were we were terrible, but he worked magic last year with that Cleveland Indians. Yeah. And so I, I know he's not in the dugout. He's having some health issues, but they're playing. They play hard for that guy. And you watch the Indians. They could be back again this year. And talking about Terry, you know, good managers don't yell and scream all the time. Mm-hmm. No, you yeah, know, they just kind of they run their club and they're you know they're kind of at ease something like that. And players play hard. It's yeah. a long season, but it, you know, some people think oh, if you yell and scream, you're a good manager. You're not, you know. Hey, there's there's been some good uh, good scream. I mean, Lasorda was a good yeller. It's far Sparky. Earl Weaver getting your face, you know. But uh, yeah. but yeah, you're right. I mean, some of them are you know some of the lower key. Mike Socha is a good you know manager and. Uh, He's you know he's pretty low key. Oh, Madden's low key. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know you don't have to you don't have to be you know fireball. Yeah, to, you're not an Earl Weaver or Billy Martin or something. Billy like Martin. That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and, and you look in basketball with Steve Kerr. Look at what he's done. I right. mean, he's not a yeller or screamer. Popovich. Yeah. Yeah, he's just a smart guy. Popovich, on the other hand, seems like he'll get in their face. But you know, that Frank Connor was up. awesome. He was the most easygoing guy in the world. And uh, but guys love him. They want to they want to play for him. What was he like as a teammate at, and then the national championship team? You know, it's interesting. If you'd have told me that Terry Francona would have managed in the big leagues after I played with him at the U of A, I would have said no chance. He was kind of a goofy goof off, and and he was always you know funny. He was you know back in college you could rag the other team and kind of say stuff to him, and then they changed the rules where you're not allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. Terry was the best ragger of anybody. I ever. <laughs> he, had, he had the best lines for the other team. I, he would make us laugh so hard when we were in the dugout. <laughs> well, that's got to be great. I mean, you know, it's a morale, bo- you know, morale boost. I'm sure that there was and... some choice words uh, in the Sun Devil and Wildcat uh, series. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, well, anyways, we just we have like one minute left, so if you do have any final thoughts, you know, to send in, uh, Karen, you know, says thank you, gentlemen, for spending part of your night with us, and okay. we appreciate the time. So it's always nice to get a, a perspective of someone who's not only played at the highest level, but who's here from Tucson. a champion. Yeah, um... So did you guys DVR the game? <laughs> I did. I did not. No. 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 All right. I well, I think it's they're all, the game's almost over. It's got to yeah. be close yeah. to yeah. over here. Like and and while started. we can't, you know, while I can't say the score, I'll at least be able to let's, let's see if I can give an update as to who's winning. What do you guys think of the format now about how the uh, yeah, you know, the, the game means the home, something? Home they should never start that to begin with. That's not right to have whoever wins the All Star game that team gets to be the home team in the World Series. Should go back and forth. And that's that's what they're doing again. Should be best record. So while I can't say the score, I will let everyone know that it is tied in the bottom of the ninth. Okay. Okay. Hopefully I got enough pitching. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I know. Bring well, somebody in from the stands. Rolling, rolling 14 deep in the bullpen <laughs> exactly. right now. Because so, yeah. everyone gets a chance to play. 
So what what is it? A forty man roster on the uh, All Star game? You know they should expand it. I you know they should bring in maybe a couple extra pitchers or something just so it should never end in a tie. So you don't have a tie, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, well, thank you both so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. We'll try and circle back with you right around the time of the World Series and sure. bring you back and kind of give you know we'll kind of wrap up the season and, and get some more insights. Other um, guys should be back in town. Billy Bays and some other game. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. You guys don't want to watch that anyway. So. <laughs> Uh, again, thank you so much to all of our sponsors. I name them off, but there's so many of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for everyone who is watching, remember the the broadcast stays on the 520 Sports Talk Facebook page. It also gets uploaded later or the next day to the 520 Sports Talk YouTube page. I want to give a super shameless plug to my son, Liam. His, uh, his YouTube page, LRS Does It All. Uh, go ahead and look that up. He's got like 50 subscribers now. Um, he has hilarious videos. He does them. It, it's so much fun. So because I have this avenue, I get to plug my kid and, and he's what he's witty. doing. He's he's funny. They did a food challenge today um, where they got a whole bunch of foreign candies from Cost Plus or whatever that world market is, and they were doing taste tests with foreign candies. And so it was it's hilarious. So it's uh it's fun. So anyways, check that out. Check us out. Five Two Sports Talk on YouTube next week. Stray Dogs, Tony yes. Borgay, Tucson Turf Seven versus Seven National Champions. Please come out and watch it live. I know a lot of people, you know, I mean, you're going to normally would, uh, you know, watch it uh, on Facebook, which we appreciate. But this show next week is going to be probably one of the best we've ever had. We're not quite a year old yet. And uh, I really look forward to next week. So uh, come out, watch us live. Get there early because Stray Dogs will be packed. Right. And you want to get there for the food and the uh, crazy shakes that they have. Yeah. For what it's worth, we are six in dog years. That's right. Yeah. Just want to throw that one out there. So anyways, uh, again, thank you. Yeah, we're still teething. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's right. <laughs> and and filling diapers. Yes, uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you start with diapers, you end with diapers. Diapers is a theme right now, and exactly. I and I and I work in the the newborn baby industry, so I get to hear about that quite a lot. So, uh, anyways, again for Andy, Bill, I am Sean. We will see you, or they will see you next week. I will try and join in as I can. But uh, they will they will be here with some uh, seven on seven football, dirty magic. Now some more local music for your way out of here. We will see you next week. We are out. Hey girl, you always seem to find your way back to me, and it always seems that I'm.